Regeneration Canada is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to promoting soil regeneration in order to mitigate climate change, restore biodiversity, improve water cycles, and support a healthy food system. In this edition of Nourishing Minds, we visit with Regeneration Canada to learn more about their vision for the future. Thank you very much for, for taking the time to chat with us uh, here at Ag for Life. Um, part of the work that we do is through a series called Nourishing Minds. And the fun part is we dig deeper into agriculture. Um, one of the words that we keep hearing, and, and in my experience, I haven't heard it much until recently, but regenerative agriculture. Um, what is regenerative agriculture? Oh, thank you very much for having me. Yes, uh, we've been hearing this and we're happy to, to, to hear that world is, uh, is getting the attention that it, uh, it deserves. So regenerative agriculture are set of principles and techniques and practices that are really rooted in, in like an ancestral and indigenous, indigenous knowledge, but also backed up by modern science. These practices and, and principles really aim to restore or regenerate the, the health of our soil. And by doing so, we're also regenerating the ecosystem. So we're restoring biodiversity, we're restoring water cycles, um, and also we're, we're making sure that um, our food system are, are just and, and, and fair and, and nutritious. Um, so these principles and practices go from, you know, soil covering, agroforestry, regenerative grazing or holistic grazing, um, to you know cover crops and really organic amendments but also it goes beyond this talking about you know social justice issue and 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 workers welfare and animal welfare so it's it's lots of this and 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 it's really a process and it's not like a fact a check yo i've done this and this and that and and that's it i am regenerative um it's a school of life so so what is your role then with uh, Regeneration Canada? My role personally? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the co-director um, of the organization. We're three co-directors. Um, and I really take care of the education slash science side of the organization alongside other administrative stuff that you I'm sure you know um but um yeah so I I my mission is really to bring science um to everybody but especially to our farmers member um so try to make the science uh simple uh but you know, true. Um, and we do this by uh, organizing workshops, uh, training, uh, conferences like the Living Soil Symposium. And of course, I, I am not um, the only one who speaks at the conference, but um, in, in, uh, in workshops and, uh, and, um, and training, I'm kind of the coordinator um, of this. Um, and keeping really um, a good library uh, 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 of what's been happening in science in terms of regenerative agriculture all over the world and try to bring this to our community. Mm. And do you work with, um, I guess, peers across the country, across, across the globe, or is it, um, is it quite specific to, to Canada and your region? Um, so we are a national wide organization you know, for, for, for all Canadian from coast to coast, we have partners and members uh, in pretty much every province and territory. And we have a couple of international partners, but this is really to like share knowledge and, 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 uh, uh, and, and, and process and, and, and like ways to do things in terms of regenerative agriculture. Um, we have a couple of partners in the US, of course, because we got uh, inspired by this, the work that they're doing and also they can inspire by the work that our, our Canadian farmer are doing. We got some uh, some partners in Europe and in Africa, but our focus is Canadian soil. We're going to go bring uh, whoever has knowledge uh, all over the world and see if this is, could be applicable to our Canadian context and then bring them to table. Um, but our focus is to regenerate Canadian soil. Right. 
And I know that you just had um, your conference um, not long ago, which would have been online, I imagine, this year. Um, and so what were some of the highlights? Yeah, um, so this year, we, for the first time, we choose to focus on the, the, uh, the water theme. Okay. Um, in our, this is our fourth edition. It was our fourth edition of the Living Soil Symposium that started in 2017. And every year we really tr tried to bring lots of different, you know, point of view and, and, and practices and, and, and that touches in pretty much all the principles and rest in terms of soil regeneration on the farm, but also in urban context and, and, uh, and beyond. But this year, we really focused on water and rehydrating our landscape, because while the, the uh, regenerative agriculture and carbon sequestration potential in agriculture soil is getting lots and lots of attention, um, restoring water cycle is more attainable in shorter term solution to the climate change, because trying to draw down carbon from the atmosphere uh, depends on lots of factors and could take up to centuries to, to, to achieve this equilibrium. Um, however, we have so much power on restoring our small water cycle and our local uh, environment and the big water cycle in terms of the planet that we wanted to bring this knowledge. And it was really great because there was this uh, um, core message um, through the 12 or 14 session that we had in this week. Um, so we talked about water and agricultural land and forest and wetland, but most importantly, we talk about water as life, as the source of life. So um, we, 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 we were really honored to have um, lots of indigenous uh, members and, and, and speakers talking about, you know, water from, from their point of view and, and how, how this is really like the essential of, uh, of life. And um, so, yeah, we, we talked a lot about water in different ecosystem. We talked about access to water. We talked about water in, 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 uh, in, in big cities and what are the, uh, the uh, different initiatives happens in West and East Canada in big cities to try to harvest this water and, and to reuse it. Um, so yeah, it was, really, it was really great. We had, really, uh, we had so much fun. That's excellent. Well, and, and as you pointed out, there's such learnings from sort of the traditional food ways uh, indig and indigenous communities that, um, you know, it's, it's important to, to share. And, and one of the things I find remarkable about, about agriculture is it's, it's depending on where you go, it's so diverse and, and the science and the technology and the applications that, that you know, farmers um, and, you know, commissions and commodity groups are using but it's always looking to advance and to be more efficient and to be more effective. And it's, it's always a pleasure hearing about different production practices, whether it's large scale, smaller scale, um, you know, something that it sounds new because we're hearing this word, but really it's not. Um, it's been around for, for years and years. And it's, I, I find it quite fascinating. And, and I know I have the privilege of talking to a lot of farmers and a lot of consumers and people connected to ag and people not connected to ag and um, just just where food is and, and how we're producing food it's fascinating and it and will continue and, and one of the things I do know is the industry doesn't stand still it's always moving it's always trying to to um, really give back to the earth and uh, that's fantastic to see so so let's talk a little bit about your members so your members are made up of producers that are practicing this type of uh, regenerative egg. Is that correct? Well, so when we started in 2017, we really saw that um, at least here in, 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 in Canada, there's lots of farmers associate associations and organization are doing great work for like, you know, you know, like, yeah, lots of years, lots of time. Um, and there are this um, community organization uh, that work on more of the in, in environmental uh, uh, realm that has 
more of like urban dwellers, maybe younger, if I'm not uh, stereotyping, but we felt there's need to have an organization or, or a platform or where discussion could happen between all these different stakeholders. So um, we adopted this multi-stakeholder interdisciplinary approach where we put in, in each activity and in each event that we're doing, there is at least five to six different uh, uh, um, uh, stakeholder groups. So we have farmers, researcher, uh, you know, normal citizen who eat like everybody, but city official, government representative. And really the idea is to create a space uh, to hear each other. Um, yes, there's challenges absolutely to producing food and, and we will continue to face those. But I do believe in, in that communication um, and how important that is. So that's, you know, you know, hats off to groups such as yourselves that are having those platforms um, for people to have discussions and to understand and to learn more. Um, I know that I've had some comments from friends that have asked me about, well, what is regenerative agriculture and how would, how can we support that? And I, the answer was, I, I don't know. How would we as a consumer know that, you know, the, the fundamentals or the production behind it? There's no, there, I'm assuming there's no labeling. Um, so what are you guys working on that or how does that come about? That's a big question. There's a lot of questions in there. <laughs> That's a big question. And I'm happy to, 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 to answer it as, as much as I can. Well, first, yes. Um, people are asking us everywhere and asking you and other groups what we can do. I think the first thing to do as a non-producer, let's say, um, is to really learn what does it take to produce because when we even if we end up not doing it because of limitation of resources or whatever understanding what does it take to uh, to produce a tomato um would 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 just be a, a, a like an, an, an eye opening for lots of people to understand how can we support another level of this um is to um to to get our food from, from these farms. Now, there is um, now uh, organic regenerative uh, uh, certification that's coming and there will be more, but I, we don't think that certification system are or should be the only uh, pathway for, for consumers to get in touch with producer using regenerative agricultural practices because what we know about it, it could be complicated, could be uh, costly for, for, for some farmers. And that's why one solution that we, we came up with is to create this interactive map of a regenerative farm in Canada where everybody can go in this map and, you know, type in their address and the map will tell them not only who's around, but which farm uh, is doing what practices and are producing which produce and where they can sell it and where they can purchase it. Mm -hmm. And we just launched this map, you know, two, two days ago, the, sorry, two weeks ago. So this is one way where we can link this and the map will only uh, be really useful for everybody if we keep as consumer uh, looking at it, recommending farmer that we might know, and then us as organization uh, reaching out and get more and more forms on, on, on this map. Then if you understand the basic of, of, of uh, if we as consumer understand the basic of the basics of, 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 of uh, agricultural production, and then we go in this farm page on, on the map, and see what they're doing and how good or hard or, or, or precious this is, is for, for the environment and for the food that we're consuming, then here may be another piece to, to facilitate uh, uh, you know, our choice in terms of where to go. And then you know, a third layer would be understanding our politics and what are the laws up there? Who is, who is, 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 uh, is favoring this kind of uh, uh, 
beyond the sustainable and, and regenerative uh, uh, agriculture or policies and laws because we need this to help uh, you know farmers transitioning so we need programs we need funding we need training we need education and this is a lot that the government can do and they are starting there are lots of programs out there that are starting but we need uh, a national wide uh, soil health and regenerative agriculture policies that as that is also accompanied by uh, programs and financing uh, uh, to really uh, uh, scale up regenerative agriculture to the point where it, it becomes a real solution to the climate crisis, a real solution to our food uh, insecurity uh, that we, we we have, a real solution to you know extreme weather events that we have been experiencing and that we'll be experiencing more and more. So there's lots of layers depending on how much time and resources and money uh, and, and, and access to this, you know, where we talk about this in, uh, in, 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 in big cities, but are there, are, there are lots of rural communities, there are indigenous people, there are people who don't have access to, to internet or to, to enough, enough money. So there is lots to be, to be done, but there are solutions out there. Well, I really appreciate that. And I know um, you know, we could talk about this for hours and hours because it's it's fascinating. Uh, again, you know, I, I I'm always amazed at um, you know the smart minds that are that are behind you know producing our food and getting it to our plate. So uh, you know, we thank you for for your part and uh, look forward to to learning more as your uh, your organization continues to grow. So thank you for taking the time to meet with us today. Thank you very much. And-